This video illustrates how to set up the LabQuest 2 with the SpectroVis Plus spectrophotometer. First, ensure that the SpectroVis Plus is connected to this LabQuest 2 by the USB. You can firmly press the power button to turn it on. You may see this flash of light, and you'll see this indicator to illustrate that it's on. It may flash on and off a couple of times. If it hangs at any one stage, please reset it or replace the unit. When the setup is complete, you may see this indication to show that there's data on this device already. This merely means that the students had uh, previously used it. You can uh, press the cancel to void this. However, because this is not a phone, you should use the stylus because it makes things easier. That's off to the side. And press cancel firmly with it. Or use a fingernail. This is not a phone, once again. This is illustrating the interface of LabQuest 2, uh, the LabQuest app. As you can see, it's on full spectrum mode. We're going to set up the calibration system, but first we have to remember that this is working uh, on full spectrum right now, so we're going to take our highest concentration of BSA and put it into the cuvette. There are two types of uh, paths for this uh, on, on the two sides, one that is clear and one that is graded. Please ensure that you put the clear uh, side into the cuvette where the light path is. At this time, don't put it into the machine yet, because we're not going to use it at this very moment. Now we're going to wait for the setup method. We're going to have to warm up the machine. So please press on to the green start or play sign in the lower left corner. Once we do that, it'll ask us if we want to calibrate the spectrophotometer. So we will press OK. It'll take 90 seconds to do so. You can skip the warm-up, but it's best to just do this. The instructor should do this before handing out the units. Before we continue, you may wish to put a blank cuvette into the system. And you will see that when you press the finish calibration, you'll get this. We can press the start or play button once again, and it'll ask us if we want to overwrite our data once again. We can put the cuvette with the highest concentration in there and uh, continue. And you can see that it will find the peak um, absorbance. In this case, it's in the green range, or about 549 nanometers. After this, we can press on the meter button and change our mode from full spectrum into events. And we can label it milligrams per milliliter, and we can also change this later on. So we'll just leave it at event or change it to BSA. It does not matter at this point. And once again, we can discard the previous data using the stylus. So now it's not exactly 540, uh, 40, but it's close enough, and you can see the highest concentration is about 0.64. We can press the play button to stop it, and you can see the point is saved. We can press keep, and we can indicate what the actual concentration is, which is 1. Now we can repeat with the next sample. So here we are uh, changing the cuvette with the next sample, which is 0 0.8. After which, we put it into the spectrophotometer, and we can press uh, the stop button again or the keep button, and change the concentration. We can continue to do this with each successive uh, sample, and you can see that there are uh, two spots on this graph now. Continue working through each sample or standard until all of the curve points are represented. As you can see, we can put in lower and lower concentrations and get lower and lower response or absorbance on this scale. When you've collected all the data and you kept pressing keep, uh, it would have stored this information after you actually illustrated what the concentrations correspond to.
and you can press on this XY on the upper right corner and it'll show you each data point. This is useful because now we can graph it. The LabQuest does that for us. We can press on the upper left corner now uh, the, the graphing tool which is under graph as you can see. And we can see and visualize that there's roughly a straight line. So pressing graph we can actually look at different things. We can even analyze them and do curve fit. And remember y equals mx plus b is a linear curve. So we're going to do a curve fit uh, using that data and we're going to choose the linear fit. Once again y equals mx plus b and it shows us what the slope m and b, the y-intercept are as well as the correlation, which shows that there is a good fitted line at about 99%. And we can see that there's just one aberrant point that does not lie very well on the line over there.